Let's go ahead and download Git on a Windows machine. So I pulled up Google right here and I just searched for Git. And the first result that came up is git-scm.com. We'll go ahead and click on there. And then on this page, this is where we'll actually download it. Okay, uh, this should show up for your operating system. So it detected that I'm on Windows and I'll just hit this download 2.3 uh, 2.0 for Windows and it'll show that latest version. Okay, that finished. I'll go ahead and click on that to open up the installer. All right, so that just showed up. You may have to verify um, that you want to allow Git to make changes on your device. If you if you do see that pop up, go and go ahead and hit just OK or yes. Uh, I'm just going to go through the defaults here. So I'm leaving everything on the default. Uh, you could change a couple of these things. I don't really use Git Bash or anything like that. Uh, most likely you'll use VS Code, uh, but you can just leave all this as as a default as well. Okay. Um, again, just going through the defaults. Okay. So I'm really not going to change anything here. Okay. And we'll go ahead and let that install. Now, the way that we're going to use Git is not like most programs. Most programs will open up by clicking on a file, um, you know, so like if I wanted to open up Google Chrome, I'd click on the Google Chrome icon. Well, Git is actually something that will be installed that will allow me to run commands on my computer. And so what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to hit my start button here and I'm going to type in CMD uh, which will get me to my command prompt. So CMD. The command prompt shows up. I'll go ahead. You can click on either one of those and we'll just click on that to open it. Now, if you have VS Code installed and you want to use that, uh, you can pretty much open up the same uh, type of window in VS Code. So at the very top, if you just click on the terminal dropdown and click new terminal, you'll see something very similar to what I'm seeing now, but within VS Code. Uh, right here, I'm gonna type in git, which is, oh, hi git. Uh, so I'll type in git, which is how we'll access all of our git functionality. And if I just say uh, git dash dash version, then it says git is not recognized as an internal or external command operable program or batch file. Okay, that's, that's because Git hasn't finished installing it. But once Git is installed, then we'll be able to see what version of Git we installed, probably that 2.32 or whatever. Uh, and then we'll actually be able to use Git for, for our repositories. We won't really have to run these commands anymore. We'll just use uh, a nice interface built into VS Code that will help us with that. Okay, uh, let's see where our install is. It's getting closer. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and let it finish. Okay, so it just finished. Uh, I'm gonna uncheck that. We don't need to see the release notes. We don't need to launch git bash, uh, but I'll just hit finish. Okay, now I'm gonna open up my command prompt. We may have to restart this. And then same thing with VS Code. Um, if you try to run that command immediately, it's likely that you have to restart VS Code or the command prompt. So I'm gonna type in CMD again. We'll go ahead and click on, on the command prompt here. And then we'll run git dash dash version. Okay. And now you can see it says get version 2.32.0 Windows 1. Okay. So now this is working. Now in VS Code, you'll be ready to go ahead and do what we're about to do with repositories. On a Mac. So I did the same thing as with Windows. I said, I just typed in git in Google and we'll go to the same link, git dash scm.com. Uh, this install process is a little bit different. Let's go ahead and look here. So again, it detected my operating system. I'll go ahead and click there. And then there's a few different options that you can use. We'll go ahead and use the binary installer here. If you're more comfortable with one of these, then, then go ahead and, and use whatever works for you. Uh, but I'll go ahead and click on, uh, on this installer and it opens up the SourceForge uh, website. This is very secure, it's very safe. Uh, I'm just gonna click on download here and we'll give this a sec. Okay, it says our, down our download started. We'll give that a sec, a couple of seconds to download. And now I'll go ahead and click on this. Okay. Now in here, if you just try to open this, it's likely that you'll see an error saying that 
it's not a secure program and you can't open it. To get around that, you can just right click on this and hit open. And that'll basically say, hey, I know what I'm doing, I wanna open this. Um, so go ahead and do that, right click on it, hit open. And then you should see this pop up. Uh, and so we will just walk through this um, and go through all of the defaults. Okay, I don't, I don't need to change anything here. Um, okay, did have to type in my password and it says installation was successful, the software was installed. I can close that, I can move that to the trash, uh, I can close this. Um, now, the way that we test this, there's a couple different ways. If you have VS Code open, great. You can use the terminal to do what I'm about to do. Uh, but I'm gonna open up the Finder in case anyone doesn't have VS Code. So you can either hit Command Space Bar to type in Terminal, okay, um, to open it that way, or you can click on your launch pad uh, and I'll just type in Terminal up here. Okay, we'll open that up. And then right here, I'm just gonna type in Git version. And you can see uh, there's the version that, that we've installed, okay. And so as long as after you type in Git version, if you see a Git version pop up here, then it means that you successfully installed Git and you can use it for whatever you need to. Okay, now I can actually do the exact same thing with VS Code. So I just open up VS Code, and if I click on uh, Terminal up at the top, you might not be able to see it, but if I click on the Terminal option up at the top, I'll just hit New Terminal. And then in here, notice this looks pretty much exactly like what we just opened, uh, and I could say Git version. And that would work the same on Windows or any other operating system that you have VS Code opened in. Uh, you can run those commands in the Terminal in here. And that would work all right all right let's go ahead and install git on a chromebook so the first thing that we have to do is we have to enable linux on a chromebook to be able to do this so what we're going to do is i'm just going to go into settings and then we're going to go into advanced developers and let's turn this Linux development environment on. Okay, if you've already done this, then great, you don't have to do it again. Um, otherwise, you'll have to do this in order to install Git, uh, in order to install VS Code, uh, but really by installing, by enabling Linux on here, uh, you'll be able to do almost everything that you could uh, on other computers that we're used to doing development work on or software de development work on. All right, you can see it finished, and it popped up this little terminal uh, that we can use for all sorts of different things. We're not really going to use it very much in this video. I guess I will just say git dash dash version right here. Uh, wow, <laughs> and git is already installed by default here. So I was going to actually take you to um, the login page or the git download page, but it looks like it's actually already installed. Um, so that's really nice. So that is all that you had to do to make sure that you had git. Let's go ahead and verify this. I'm gonna see if I can, um, I'm just gonna say VS Code download. Um, and we'll go ahead and download, oops, that's the wrong Visual Studio. Let's see, VS Code. And I'll go ahead and download that one. I'll give that a sec. Now, when you activate Linux on a Chromebook, it'll actually make almost like a little virtual machine. And so all of your Linux files uh, will be stored together in this Linux files place. Um, and so anytime I want to use Git, I'll have to be within that. Uh, that's where my terminal will be. Um, you know, and that's that's where all my development stuff will be. That's where that's where I will install VS Code. You can see that right now it's installing this right here, but it says it's a Linux installer instead of the general um, installer that we use when we're installing regular files or programs onto a Chromebook. Okay, so it said installation's complete. Let's go ahead and see if we can just search for VS Code. Look at that. Okay, and with Git installed, we should be able to work with, um, with any like GitHub repository. So I'm just gonna go to github.com And I'm going to sign in here. Okay, VS Code is looking great. Uh, in here, let me just make that full screen. I'll close that. Um, let's.
let's see here. So kind of, there we go. I'm like, we're missing stuff at the top. All right, so I'm just going to click on terminal, click new terminal, and then I should, oh, look, that looks just like our Linux terminal. So we'll say git uh, status. It'll say it's not a part of a repository. And so you can see uh, these git commands are working out great. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to pull from a repository or something, I could, after I sign in, I'll go ahead and ignore that. Uh, we have verified that Git is working in VS Code. Okay. Um, and then if I was actually going to keep, if I was going to continue developing on here, I'd go ahead and probably pin both of these, or at least I'd pin VS Code um, to this to this doc um, for easier access. So, okay. Well, I hope that helps.